Hello guys, this is a follow-up from the last video where I ran out of time to talk about the Flaming River Steering Column install. It should be an easy process to install it, but like everything, there were issues. So one thing is in front of the other and I need to get the steering column in to figure out how the gas tank's going to be made to go around the steering column and its linkages. And uh, so I'm using this pillow block, pillow block mount, uh, but it can't go down here, it's too low. So I'm going to graft in 16th inch one by one and cut it back and then, then mount this to that and tie all these things together. Seems to be the easiest thing to do and hopefully the strongest, we'll see. The plan is to do the project without using any nuts. All of the bungs are threaded. Fiddling with loose nuts is a pain and in my opinion, just cheapens the outcome. The project is done in sections. The first section is to tie the right and left sides together. Throughout the project, it will have to come apart numerous times. Not having to deal with nuts helps. In this particular area, I started out by using ribbon nuts, or nut certs, if you will. It's an easy way to add threads to something that doesn't have any. Size 1024 is the most common, but I have an assortment. In this case, these are quarter 20s. The rivet nuts didn't work out in this case. One of them wouldn't grip the metal and spun when trying to tighten. It happens. Anyway, they're getting drilled out and replaced with weld nuts. The weld nuts are way more secure and only add a little more trouble as they have to be TIG welded. The steering column crossmember got rather busy with threaded weld bones. Using the threaded portion of a couple of bolts, a slit was cut into one end while a point was ground into the other. It makes for a good transfer punch. Screw the point just a little past the surface. All right, it's looking okay. This is definitely really solid, but the problem is, is that it, it clocks into the hole too low. And this really can't, you just, it can't be bent. I mean, you can't just, can't just ape it into position. There's not really a clean way to change any of the angle, uh, except for remachining this piece. So I'm going to take a measurement, it's probably like a degree or two at the most, and then adjust it in the mill on this piece. So to get that to go straight in the hole, it's got to move about, see that's 21 degrees, so it's a, about a degree and a half. So, something's not exactly square, and I think that's not cut exactly square. And that cleaned it up. Here, the other side of the piece is being machined, the same one and a half degrees so that the bolt head sits square on it. Well, it's not exactly in the center of the hole, but it's in the hole. Manipulate it just a little bit. And the 
this flange will cover up all the ugliness. Now that part should be straightforward, but probably not. They'll probably be on something on the other side. It's going to keep me from doing that real nice. Well, this turned into a mess. The original weld nuts had to be cut off, the metal was thin and covered with undercoating, and it was hard to access. I'm going to have to have a chat with my cameraman. This is way out of focus. So we can tilt this this way anywhere we want. And I got it tilted around here to take as much angle out of this joint as possible. Now it does get into my gas tank area, but I think I need to cut this angle down as much as possible. Cutting the stainless steel double D steering shaft down to size. Drilling divots so the set screws have something to lock onto. All of the steering universal joints are from Flaming River. They're pretty proud of them as it's reflected in their price. I know this is sort of goofy, but come on, I had to do it to show that it works. So there it is. Now I can move on to the next 100 things I have to do. See you next time.